Hey guys, you're with Connor from Ari Studio, and welcome to the second part of our Location Tracker app tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to be initializing the Xamarin Forms maps and using that on the Android platform, and then we're also going to be plotting our current position directly onto the map. So this is currently the last position that we got up to in the tutorial, and at the moment, all we do is pull through the latitude and longitude of the device and display it on screen. So the next step is to initialize the Xamarin Forms maps so we can now plot that position on the map. So we want to add the maps to the portable class. So we're going to right click on the class, add new get package. Then we're going to click browse and we're going to search for xamarin.forms.maps. Then we're going to select it and then we're going to click install and then we're just going to accept these terms and then this is going to add it into the portable glass for us we then want to do the same in the android environment so we're going to select on the dot droid add new git package we're going to click browse and then we're going to search for xamarin.forms.maps again select it and then we're going to click install And then once again, we're just going to accept these terms and then wait for this to download and install. So then once it's installed, we can just minimize this. So we're just going to select main activity in the Android development area. And we're just going to create one line of code that's going to initialize the maps in Android. So we're going to type global, double colon, Xamarin, dot forms maps dot init open bracket this comma bundle and then semicolon so now that we've initialized the forms maps for the android development area we're just going to right click on the dot droid go down to properties and then in the android manifest area we're just going to add a few more permissions so the first permission is the extra commands permission and then we're also going to add the access network state and then we're going to scroll down and we're going to enable the internet permission and then there's one more permission that we need to add and that is the Wi-Fi access state so once these have been checked we can just press ctrl s to save it and then we can minimize the android manifest So now that we've downloaded the NuGet packages for the portable glass and the Android development area, there's a few other steps that we need to do before we can get the Xamarin Form maps to work. Xamarin Forms essentially acts as a wrapper around each platform's native maps applications. So for instance, iOS uses Apple Maps and Android uses Google Maps. Each native platform maps has different steps you need to take before you can use the maps in your application. In this tutorial, we're only going to be going over the Android and Google Maps. But if you want to use the other platform specific maps, I'll put a link in the description for a Xamarin tutorial that you can follow through this. So I'll be posting a second link in the description that we're going to need to go to now, and that's the Google Developer Console. And we're going to need to create an API to authorize our app to use Google Maps. So once we're in the Google Developers Console, we want to go to the drop down at the top and we want to create a new project. And I'm just going to name this Maps android and then we're just going to click create in the bottom right and then we're just going to wait for this to create our project api so once this created the project it's going to refresh the page and then on the right under the google maps apis we want to select the google map android api and it's going to take us to this screen we then, we're going to go and click enable at the top and wait for it to enable the API. So once the API has been enabled, we want to click on the go to credentials button and then it's going to take us to here. And then we're just going to click what credentials do I need and then it's going to bring up this tab. We're then going to click on the restrict key button and then we're just going to name this to something memorable. So I'm going to change it to 
location app key. And then we're just going to select Android apps at the bottom. And then we're going to click this. So now there's two inputs that we need. The first is our application package name and the second is the SHA1 certificate. For us to get the SH1 key, there's a few things we're going to have to do. First, we're going to have to go to our Java JDK bin. I'm going to put a link in the description to the path that you're going to need to go to. But once we're in the bin, we're just going to click anywhere, use shift and click, and then we're going to open up the command prompt. I'm also going to put another link in the description for some code that we can paste into the command. And this is just going to give us our SH1 key for our application. So we can see that the script has printed out all this information. I'm just going to drag this to the right a sec. The only thing we're concerned about is in the certificate fingerprints, and this is this long key, the SH1, and we're just going to copy it. And we're just going to paste it into the second parameter here. So now we just need to go and get our package name. So we're going to go back into the application. And we're just going to go look in the file explorer to the right. We're going to open up properties, go into our Android manifest. And then the second line down in the manifest, we can see that the package name is location sample app dot location sample app. Your package name may be different to mine, depending on how you've set it up, but your package name will be referenced here. So we're just going to go ahead and drag the Google console back in and we're just going to add our package name to here. And we're just going to go ahead and click save. So now that our API key has been created and saved, we can start adding some code in to get the map to show. So we're just going to go ahead back in the project and we're going to go open our main page.cs. And we're just going to add the using xamarin.forms.maps. So we're just going to go ahead into our main page.xaml. Now, before we can start adding the map into the actual layout, we just need to reference the maps at the top in the content page header. So we're just going to go to the top press enter onto a new line and we're just going to add the following xml ns colon maps equals clr dash namespace colon xamarin dot forms Dot maps semicolon assembly equals Xamarin dot forms dot maps. Now that our maps has been referenced at the top, we can go ahead and add it into the view. So we're just going to create a new stack layout. We're going to place this stack layout into our grid dot row zero definition and this will place it above the labels and button and we're just going to assign some vertical options and we're going to assign this as start and expand and then we're just going to add some padding and we're just going to put it as 30 so inside the stack layout we want to define the map so we're just going to do that by open maps colon map space width and we're just going to set it to we we'll just put the width request to 320 at the moment so after we set our width request we also want to set a height request and we just want to set this to the value of 200 and then we just want to close this off and then I'm just going to tidy the spacing up a little bit So now that we've created the maps, we just want to add a few properties to it to define it. So we just want to set a name and I'm just going to set this to my map. And then we also want to set the property showing user. I just want to set this to true. And now there's different styles that you can set for the map, but I prefer my map type to be the street view, but you could specify it to whatever you want. So now that we've initialized our map view, 
We're just going to go ahead and go into our main page.cs. So inside here, so inside here, we're just going to add some logic to display our current position into the map. So we're just going to go ahead and add the following my map dot move to region open brackets map span dot from center and radius open brackets new position open brackets and then we're just going to pass in our latitude and longitude so we're going to type in position dot latitude comma position dot longitude and the third parameter that we're going to pass into here is comma distance from mile and we're just going to set this to one and we're going to set a semicolon to finish the logic and then we're just going to tidy this up a bit just going to backspace this onto one line and then we're just going to keep the third parameter on the second line so it's easier to read but now if we go ahead and execute this hopefully it should run and show our position so we're just going to wait for this to load so we can see here that we've got an error the error is telling us that I have spelled the vertical options wrong in the XAML. So we're just going to go into it and look at the vertical options in the stack layout. And we're just going to amend this by removing the E. So we're just going to execute this again to see if we get a successful build or not. So this is just telling us that I've missed a step and we just need to do one more thing before we can get the maps to run. So we're just going to exit off this. We're going to open up our Android manifest. I'm just going to open it up with a normal viewer and then in the application tag at the bottom just above the end manifest we're just going to define our API key and this is so our application knows that we've got access to Google Maps and this is via the API key that we set up previously in the tutorial so we're just going to go ahead and enter the following open bracket metadata space android colon name and then we're just going to put in the string com dot google dot android dot geo dot capitalized api underscore key and we're just going to close that string off type android colon volume and then in the new string we're just going to put the api key that we made previously in the tutorial i'm just going to open it up i'm going to take the key value in the list and the credentials and then we're just going to paste this into the android value we're going to close off the metadata tag we're going to click save and now we're just going to go ahead and execute the application And now we can see that the application is loaded and we're currently seeing maps. Now we click our get current location and then we have to click send because we're sending mock locations. You can see that it's pinpointed us but the mock location seems to be in the middle of the sea. So we want to go ahead and have this current value for the longitude and then at the second value for the latitude
and then go ahead and click send and get current location. Might need to click send again. Then you can see the latitude and longitude value takes us over the location of the Eiffel Tower. So we can see that when we get the current location, it's now plotting it in the map. Just a side note, if an error has gone wrong when we were trying to register for the API in the Google console, then the map will show, but it will only show a gray screen and it won't show any data. So if this happens, you might need to just go back and recheck the steps to get it to work again. But I appreciate you all tuning in for this episode in the series. In the next episode, it's going to be the final one. And we're going to style up the page so it can be used as an actual application. We'll also be deploying it onto a phone. And we'll be recording the phone's updated positions as we're moving. And then we'll be plotting it onto a map so we can track the device's position as we go in real time. But once again, thank you guys for tuning in. And I'll see you on the next episode.